Ms. Hart, as she was known to generations of students, employees, and colleagues, began her professional career as an elementary school teacher in Madison, and later taught journalism at the local high school. In the mid-1940s, Carol left teaching and became a librarian at the University of Georgia. With her 13 years of experience at the university library and her growing network of history and archives colleagues, Hart was hired as the assistant to the director of the Georgia Department of Archives and History in Atlanta in 1957. I would say that she's the mother of the archives profession in Georgia. She really kind of birthed that baby and helped nurture it and bring her along and provide the sustenance that has left a legacy. Archivists are not always the most politically astute because it's a stewardship role. And you're supposed to be trustees. Well, that's my own personal respect for her and what she did with what I saw. That this is legacy of our state's documentary heritage is so much richer and fuller and appreciated as a result of her investment helping create a generation or more of true believers who do it for employment. But at the same time, you've got to have a real passion for seeing that the records are secure. Ms. Francis Freeborn Pauli. The first year she was eligible for the Georgia Women Achievement Award, we believe that she was most appropriate to be honored for this, to recognize all that she did in the state of Georgia. I tend to date the beginnings of her organizing career, political organizing, activist career, whatever you want to call it. I tend to date that from, from the Great Depression era. And it was really seeing the additional misery that was caused for, for people white as well as black in the metropolitan Atlanta area during the Great Depression. That was the radicalizing experience for her as it was for many, many people. During the 1960s, Polly deepened her commitment to interracial activism and civil rights when she served as the executive director of the Georgia Council on Human Relations, the state branch of the Southern Regional Council. With this job, her first paid and professional position, Polly brought races together in towns across Georgia, seeking to build support for the goals of the civil rights movement. How many women really worked at that level of reform, let alone at a voluntary level? To go down to Albany, Georgia and work in a desegregation campaign that was very unpopular or to help keep schools open. People might think those things privately, but not every white person, let alone a white woman, did it. I think she would say that there were times she was afraid, but not to a point that it stopped her from participating at a level that made her comfortable. As I enter the building at the plaza level, there she is, a portrait of elegance, dress of crimson, crowned with an exquisite strand of pearls, dark hair, stylish for the day, softly framing a classic face, a face with a slight smile and eyes that are kind, intelligent, and most important, well. Mel Hudson Woodruff had a really strong influence in developing our School of Nursing here at Emory into the nationally recognized institution that it is today. She was involved in nursing when many people looked upon it as being dirty and beneath individuals. But she looked past that, where many of her friends were probably volunteering in a much more social environment. She got dirty and she lived out her passion. As a member of the Emory Hospital Administration Committee, Nell was able to deliver her dream of creating the Emory School of Nursing. In 1967, the Emory University Board of Trustees renamed the Emory School of Nursing the Nell Hodgson Woodruff School of Nursing. In 1968, Nell was present at the groundbreaking of the new building which would house her nursing school. 